100%, I believe these are the last straps you will ever need to buy. Just watch. So if you've ever been full driving, camping, motorbike riding, taken a load of rubbish to the tip, had to tie anything to your roof, you know, done anything like living in life, you've had to tie something to your roof rack, tie a trailer down, just tie anything down in general, like whether it be firewood to your roof or a box or kids toys, clothes bags, anything at all, if you've actually, you know, done something in life, you've had to do that. So. I've had many iterations of straps over the years, and I know a couple of you are gonna be sitting there going, <laughs> Steve's had a strap on. No, no. <laughs> Making myself laugh now. <laughs> um, not talking about strap ons, that's a completely different video, and George is in it, so <laughs> hold off for that one. Uh, so before we get into the new show, how about we just have a quick look at what my old straps were, so we can, so you've got a fair comparison of what, what I'm upgrading to here. Okay, so genuinely, I do a load of rubbish to the tip every week for my work. So I'm always tying stuff down on a trailer. It's just part of my job, so I have to do it. So genuinely, as I move all the rubbish out of the way, these are actually my straps that I use every day of the week until there's new ones. So they are pretty heavy duty ones, so a couple of them are like a couple of tons rating for each. They're just big ratchet straps for everything that I do. So some of them, there's a fair, fair mixture of them. These, these are the biggest ones. What are these rated to? These are uh, 400 kilo, I think we're talking here. What's that? So that's not for lifting, 400 kilo. So that's for the big ones. Some of the small ones I've got. Oh. Can't even see a strap. Yeah, that's it. Some of the other ones aren't even marked on there, so I have no idea what the braking strain is from. Everyone, so some of the older generation will all be about ropes. It's just rope, 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 truckies hitched. Oh uh, man, used to do, oh, still does that all the time. And it's perfectly good stuff. I'm kind of useless with ropes, to be honest. So I always went with the ratchet straps. Super easy to use, but they're pretty big and bulky and clunky and they take up a fair amount of space. That's where these ones gotta come into place. Okay, so back at the desk, and you would have seen where I grabbed them out of the car. Well, if not, I'm showing it to you right now. These live up on my, up on my new parcel shelf, which video is coming soon for that one. These are torque straps. So I have one of every iteration of them. So two of them I actually bought myself. The third one, Aaron from Essential Off-Road, who, who was the Australian distributor of torque straps, actually sent me the third set. So I had a complete set of one of each so I could do this video a little bit more comprehensively. Um, it's kind of running out of money after two sets and I'm like, oh, it's a lot of money to spend on straps. So I'm just trying to... <laughs> so thank you, Aaron, for that. He has supplied me with at least one of these sets. Um, to do this video for you guys. So I can show you the difference between the three different types and the scenarios that they'd be used for. So the smaller set is actually the red set, which kind of looks the coolest to be honest out of all of them. The red set is rated to a 226 kilo working load limit and a 680 kilo braking strain. So that's gonna work for most people and that's the smallest set there is. Up from there is the platinum series, which is the ones I actually use the most out of all of them, which is why they're probably the messiest ones. These ones are 226 kilo working load again and 680 kilo braking, braking strain. Pretty much the same thing, but with a slightly heavier lo load rated spring inside. I'll get to that in a minute. Then you get these bad boys. So these ones I've only used a handful of times so far, which is why they still look brand new. So these ones are a working load limit of 340 kilo and a braking strain of 980 kilo, so nearly a ton. These bad boys are what's gonna take over for me for those other bad boys over there. But these are 10 times quicker to use. So 
So you're probably going, well, why is the spring so important? It doesn't really matter. You just, all you do is pull it, pull it tight like at every other motorbike strap that works on motorbikes quite well and other, other applications, of course. It's a bit unique. Let me grab my, my convincer. All right. So you've probably seen these ads all over Facebook and stuff. Two straps here, both super tight overall. This one's probably actually slightly tighter just because of the way I've done it up. It is a, this is the bigger strap and this is only the medium strap for, for the torque straps. And I'll just make sure that oh, fully done up. So that spring is fully loaded there. This one's still nice and tight. Oh yeah, listen to that. This is why the spring's so cool. All of a sudden, this one's loose. This one's still super tight. So everyone's seen that little test they do with the boxes and the springs working everywhere else. So that's obviously the, the, the advantage of this type of strap. It, it, it maintains that pressure as your load would shift. Everyone's kind of, well, a few people would know that by now. Obviously, if you've seen some of the advertising, not everyone's gonna know about these straps just yet. Um, but one thing that never really gets shown is the actual pulling strength of these straps versus a conventional strap. So I've got a set of scales, so they're load rated scales, and I wanna test the individual straps, all the way from the lightest, medium to heavy duty, a small ratchet strap, and a big ratchet strap. And I wanna see how much pressure you can pull with these things versus conventional ratchet straps. Obviously this is, this is a big ratchet strap, like it's one of the larger ones on the market. So it's not really a fair, <laughs> fair game, but also these things, are, these things are big and chunky, so maybe it is, who knows? I, I've honestly not done this test yet. I, it's the first time I pulled the scales out. I'm genuinely interested to see how this goes. So we'll work our way up from all this medium, large, and small, medium for the ratchet straps and we'll put all the results up on the screen and see what happens. All right, so what I will do to be fair, I'm not gonna reset the actual the thing from there. It has to carry the weight. So just the, the carrying of the weight is about nine kilo worth of force just to carry like the chain and straighten it up. So, but if I, <coughs> that's fully tight. 48.76 kilo of force overall there. It's not bad. Now for the platinum. So this is the uh, middle middle strength one. So same thing. Ooh, 42.82 less oh, make sure she's tight 46 and that that's as oh, that's as tight as she's going so 47 all right time for big bertha i've got high hopes for this one Mm. Make sure she's tight. 83. So almost double the strength. Ooh, she's got some spring. Uh, so the first of our ratchet straps, these are probably the most common that most people are going to have. Just a small little ratchet strap from Bunnings. Not really super heavy duty. What's the rating on this thing? Uh, lashing capacity, 350 kg. So, I am keen as mud to see this. Ninety-two. She's tight. 
Yeah. I can just keep yanking that and my carrier ends moving and the handbrake's on. That's 200 kilo already. So you can definitely get more pressure out of a ratchet strap. All right, so some of the features I've found with the torque straps over conventionals is exactly this. So everyone's straps always seem to end up in a pile exactly like this. So if I go to grab Yep, uh, it's gonna happen all day long. I've been dealing with it for years, I kind of just get used to it. You just go, all right, five minutes untangle on these straps because that's what's just what you gotta do. Pile of block ones. Straight out. Next one, straight out. Super easy, that's because they have little hoops with locks on the end of them, so they can't catch on anything in between. So when they're all just randomly chucked in a pile, it makes them easy to get in and out. That little hoop is also super cool. It means you can loop around stuff, hook it onto itself, and it's gonna hold it in place without falling off. Somebody. All right, so we're out in, I don't know where we are now, like halfway between Fowler's Gap. Fowler's Gap. So halfway between Broken Hill and Tipperborough camping and actually Louise has been borrowing the, the straps because they're heaps easier to use than the ratchet straps so show you literally once they're on yeah on yep that's it that's how quick they are and literally a female can do it. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get in trouble for that. I'm sorry. Females can do everything they want to do. Just most of them choose not to. <laughs> so you're gonna get in trouble. Please don't please don't hate me. This conversation I don't know if I'm gonna re if I can use this footage anymore. <laughs> it's just got R rated. <laughs> All right, but that is literally how they work. Let's just hook them on, pull them tight. We've done, you've, done, you've had them for what, three days now? Yep. And not, they haven't budged, everything's super and, tight. And have you lost a swag in that time? Yeah, Louise has famously lost a swag before. Two swags. Two swags. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you, you're gonna go home and buy some of these stats, aren't you? Absolutely. See, there we are, all right. Back to the shed. All right, so anyone knows anything about ARB base racks, know they are notoriously hard to tie, absolutely anything down to and they're right pain in the ass and let's just spend a fortune buying every single accessory that they have so let me put you down over here for a second please don't fall off the roof so this dovetail sit system kind of average like you know, oh, but that hooks in there really nicely surprisingly um you can do this for almost anything as well this is where the handle comes into it as well so if you wanted to around the whole thing onto itself. Nice little loop. That's what the handle's for. As far as I know anyway. To basically do exactly that. Chuck the other the other two tails over. And we'll go around the other side. Alright. On the other side you can see I've got an awning in the way. So it just makes life even harder. Um, having said that, because of the awning though, I do have a little eyelet on this side. So I'm gonna cheat slightly. Oh. No, I'm not, because it's in the wrong spot. Same thing, I'll put you down for a second. If you can see me, hopefully. This one, I'm actually just gonna hook back on to itself. So you can do whatever you want with the straps. From there, it is literally, oh. all right. I'm doing this holding a camera on purpose. I know it's super awkward for you guys, oh, zoomed in. Super awkward for you guys watching it. But I've done this literally one-handed and my, and my swag is tied down. Like, how good's that? No ratchets, no nothing. That is super tight. Like, 
and that was just me leaning on it. But uh, a bit more out of it. Look, that's compressed down heaps. That sucker's going nowhere. For a single strap, that's impressive. Obviously, you chuck two on there just to be sure because, you know, who wants to lose a swag on the highway? Or maybe two. Just little features like that sort of make a big difference when you're tying stuff down all the time, or even occasionally for that matter, because time matters. I know a lot of people go, oh, but you're camping. Why are you, why are you trying to rush when you're camping? It's not a matter of rushing. I think it's more a matter of doing things efficiently so you can enjoy the downtime more. Like there's certain things you do when you go camping that aren't enjoyable, stuff you don't necessarily want to be doing, but you have to do it. If that can be made easier and more efficient with something like this, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. $79, whatever it is they're worth. I think they were. I think the, the two normal ones are 79, the bigger ones, 109. I could be wrong on that. I'll put it up on the screen below. Um, actually, Essential 4x4 has given me a promo code for this. So if you use the promo code A4X4A, it gives you free delivery. So it's saving yourself 10 bucks, which is pretty cool. I reckon that's very, very generous of them. So I suppose the question is going to be are these straps worth the money? For 80 bucks a strap, they're not, they're not cheap because you can go down to Bunnings and buy a pack of four ratchet straps for 80 bucks pretty much. So you, they're not the most economical strap to be buying. But I think the versatility and the, the ease of use and some of the ergonomics of them, so they're just these little clips alone, oh, for me, that's magic, um, is worth the, worth the investment. These straps are a bit of an investment, but I think that if you're any type of keen full driver, camper, motorbiker, um, fishing, whatever, whatever you do outdoorsy wise, you're gonna have to tie stuff down eventually. These are definitely gonna be that key that are gonna make your life a whole lot easier down the track. This isn't a sponsored post, this isn't, isn't a sponsored video at all. This is, as I said before, I, I paid for these straps. Aaron donated one to me, so I had a complete set of all of them so I could show you all of them. That's it. There was no expectation of positive, negative, um, pushing timelines or anything else for for a video. It was just a yeah, cool. Oh, if you're gonna make one, I've got I've got the other, I've got the last one for you. That makes up a whole thing. So that way, if you want to include all of them, go for it, man. That's it. Aaron's a top guy. I've been with him before. Obviously, you've seen him in some of the videos in the past. We've, we've done a, a big trip down the road back when Toby was a fair bit younger. Um, he's just an awesome guy trying to have a crack at business and and do something different in life, which. <laughs> Who, who can begrudge a guy for doing that? So bloody well done, mate. Obviously, obviously Aaron hasn't actually made these himself. These are an American product, and he's he is the Australian importer of the products. Like as a spring example, pretty strong guy. Oh, I can barely pull that apart. Oh, that's that is tight. But that's pretty much what it is. It's a giant heat shrink around there, big uh, spring in the middle with some obviously protective coating over the top of it to stop fingers getting pinched and whatnot in there. And that provides that, that cushion of movement. So you've got something on your roof, firewood for example. How many times have you seen someone with a dent in their bonnet because they've lost some bloody firewood over the front? It's just, it, it happens. These sort of things obviously will, will help prevent that from happening long term, in my opinion. This little loop, as you would have seen before, can be hooked onto things, so that's an awesome little thing for, especially me with the base, the ARB base rack, the mounting system on that's right behind the bum to actually get anything for adapters wise. This means I can loop stuff around on both ends. Look at that, just pull straight out without even catching. So I can literally have loops on both ends of the straps. Job done. You don't even need a tie down point on your roof rack with these type of straps because these will hook around anything which, same thing, saves you money in the long run because it means you don't have to go out and buy all the, all the adapters and, and the little eyelets and all the rest of the stuff. This works with everything. I keep mine in a bag, just scrunched up because that's what happens and they sit in my car permanently. I think they're awesome. If you like them, don't forget to use the promo code straight in for, uh, A4X4A and go give them a crack. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next week.